As we have said on this forum before, what Kenyans must now prepare themselves for are some very major defections from Azimio to the ruling Kenya Kwanzaa and UDA party. Now I feel this is a very important heads up yeah, for our members on this channel because I really sympathize with most of us because it has been an emotional roller coaster since that fateful day in August 2022 when the country was treated to what they could not believe. When we saw with our eyes and some of us thought our eyes are either cheating us or we are in a very bad dream. But it ended up being a reality. And it has been all very emotional. People not switching on their TV sets. People boycotting the news on television. Yeah. And many Kenyans don't realize this. But that had an impact on our media. Media houses had to fire people. Because you see, if you don't have viewers watching your newscast, if you don't have people watching TV, advertisers are not interested. And their major source of revenue is advertising. Yeah, so many things happened. So why it is important is that it is good for Kenyans to prepare themselves and maybe to take the very good advice of Senator Jackson Mandago, formerly governor of Wasingishu. He is yourselves weke kwa heart, weka kwa lungs. Yeah, remember that advice? Because after all that has happened so far, yeah, all that we have seen, heartbreaking things, including the finance bill 2023. Yeah. After all those things, I fear that a headline like Major Azimio figure defects to Ruto may just be the last straw. Some people could end up in hospital. And I'm serious. Yeah, so please get the heads up. This is something we should expect. Now in a moment I'll explain why. Yeah, because really the writing is on the wall. In a moment I'll explain in great detail why. But for now, tell your friends, especially the elderly. Yeah, this thing is coming. Tuliza boli mapema. Yeah, remove your heart from there early. You know when something happens and you're expecting it, it will not have such a huge impact in your heart. Yeah. If the man you love or the woman you love suddenly announces that they're leaving you, it is not the same thing as you seeing the signs very early. Yeah. Then you prepare your heart. You prepare yourself. You transfer those feelings from the heart to the lungs. <laughs> if that is possible. Now there's another heads up I want to give you. The content of my show today <laughs> Please prepare yourself. I'm going to say some things that some people are going to feel very provoked. But what do I do? It is the truth and nothing but the truth. Okay? But those things are very revealing and they'll help you understand very clearly the mindset of those people who you have put all your hopes on. Yeah, instead of putting your hope on Almighty God, you've put your hope on some people. Okay? So, karibu sana, and let's get this show on the road. But please allow me before we do that, yeah, to keep a promise. I always try my best to keep promises of informing you of interesting stuff that you may be interested in. And at the same time promoting our channel members. Yani kusaidiana, lifting each other up, which is very important for this season we have entered into. Now, especially in Nairobi, it seems the cold season is now knocking on the door. Yeah, our winter, where it gets very cold, especially at night. But even during the day, when you are going to work or when you are preparing to go to work, 
and you have to go into that shower. <laughs> it is a challenge. And therefore this may be a good time to get in touch with Magda's home creations who deal in interior decoration based in Gigiri, Nairobi. For those who know Nairobi, I saw the other day some amazing duvets. Very classy, very exclusive. Now I know I'm sounding strange to my fellow men. Because as men, if you've ever gone shopping with your wife, the women tend to get very frustrated. He's in a duvet too. And the thing he's pointing at has strings sticking out all over the place. Is the wrong color. Is just wrong. But him is looking at the price. Can't blame the man. <laughs> you see, the truth is, mostly it's a women who have taste and class and they're able to recognize quality very quickly. And for those of us in the diaspora who like to give gifts that people will remember you by, duvets are an excellent idea for just now. Because in the coming weeks, they will be needed badly. Yeah, but then you can also consult this channel member even for your other interior decor requirements. Yeah, if you're looking for something exclusive, classy, unique, hautaki kupamba nyumba yako, alafu wende mali pengine, you see a copy paste of your home. <laughs> How would you feel? Yeah, it's not a bad idea to be a family of exclusivity. Yeah, class. You know our surroundings always affects our mood. And as we all know, in this season, in our dear country, there is not much yeah, to lift up your mood. There isn't. So if you're blessed with the resources, this may not be a bad idea. And you can see telephone numbers that you can use to get in touch with uh, Magda's home creations yeah, and see what they have to offer. And maybe there'll be something you'll be able to get that you really need that may help to ease what we're all going through. You know, even as I'm saying this, I have a little kafir. Yeah, because I know some of you, it happens all the time, one day will visit me and they may say to themselves, And interior deca and taste. <laughs> Just kidding. Let's get down to serious business. Now, in case you didn't know, all those Ruto UDA bloggers are still around. Yeah, it's only that they've been overwhelmed. <laughs> because you know, these are just few people with many handles playing their game. Now it has become impossible because Kenyans are up in arms in social media. Real accounts, real Kenyans have drowned them. But they are really struggling to become relevant again. And I saw this news item which implied that Kalonzo Musioka has aimed a barb at his principal, the leader of Azimio, Raila Molodinga. And he has done this by suggesting we forget about constitutional demonstrations yeah, and focus on reforms at the IEBC. Now, after seeing such a report, quoting Kalonzo Musioka, what would be going through your mind? It's obvious. Huyu jamaa anaenda. Or even better, huyu jamaa tayari ameenda. Yeah, he's just looking for a way out of Azimio to defect into Kenya Kwanza and UDA where the money is. But hold on a minute. This report is actually false. It is misquoting Stephen Kalonzo Msioka. You know when I first saw it, something was really telling me this is all wrong. No, 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 no. Because we all know the history of Kalonzo Musyoka and William Samoy Ruto. Don't forget that President Ruto is a very emotional person. 
he never forgets especially things which are very emotional and then also remember what Kalonzo Musyoka said to Root and Company Root and Uhuru actually when you guys are finished with ICC in 10 years I promise I will organize the presidency for you <laughs> I'm a lawyer I'm a senior counsel I have seen the ICC charges you're facing they're serious and all I can tell you now is that after I finish my 10 years, I think by that time you'll have finished with the ICC. <laughs> now, with Bwana William Samoy Ruto, you never come back from something like that. Let us agree. You never come back from something like that. So this report was puzzling. And so I did my digging around and I looked for the original audio of what Kalonzo Musyoka said. Nothing like what was reported. Nothing like that. Hey, I know we are still not in the 60s. But clearly people can do a twist dance move. Yani this thing has been twisted to mean something very different. Yeah. Well done you dear bloggers. Well done. Now you can send that invoice. Wakutumie your 20k. Yeah, for your miserable work. You see, as I always advise, young people, please, we're human and we get hungry, but please make an effort to do things that will stand the test of time. Especially in our current situation, where things are not going to be the way you think they're going to be. And you can keep on talking about 2027, yeah, but it is you will end up with egg on your face. Because I'll be 2027, <laughs> Vitu kwa ground is very different. Yeah, first of all, this administration is not going to get there. That should be obvious. Watch at Wambihani Okweli. This problem in Sudan that removed Bashir, a very powerful military dictator, where did it start? Do you remember? It started when bread prices were hiked. Chakula, food, that's where it all started. The very famous French Revolution, where did it start? Remember that very arrogant comment by a queen? What is the problem? If the people can't find bread to eat, see they eat cakes. That's where it started. Food. And I can go on and on and on and on. You see, a hungry person is not reasonable. You cannot reason with a hungry person. And the last thing you can do is try to sell houses to a hungry person. <laughs> that should be obvious. And now in Kenya it is even worse. Because the finance bill 2023, which I'm told will pass without any problem. That is what people are telling me. That is not my opinion. Yeah. But they're telling us it will pass. That thing is going to remove whatever little money that is falling into the pockets of Kenyans to buy food. Yeah. So Kenyans will get hungrier. So you tell me, how will we get to this 2027? With this same government, with those same policies. In fact, even tell me. How we will get to the year 2024, next year, the way things are going, explain to me, I understand. Because me, I don't see. In fact, if I was a politician, yeah, minding about my stomach, minding about only me, myself and I, what I'd be doing right now is defecting very quickly to Azimio. The writing is on the wall. Yeah. So that I make sure Kikiumana, I'm not on the wrong side. Because it is pretty obvious. Kitaumana. Tena kitaumana kumana. Shortly. Very shortly. Let's wait and see. Unless of course human nature changed. And I missed that report. I missed that news item. Of course assuming that the French Revolution did not happen. What happened in Sudan did not happen. Yeah, all that was fake news. 
assuming all those things are true then let's discuss 2027 anyway Stephen Kalonzo Musyoka did not criticize Raila Amolo Odinga he didn't but there's something else I saw in Stephen Kalonzo Musyoka's remarks that caught my attention and I'll cover that in a subsequent video but for now you need to know confirmed from me if you trust me that Stephen Kalonzo Musyoka has no intentions of leaving Azimio he did not say what people are saying he said the long and short of what he said is that electoral justice must be taken seriously by Ruto and the Ruto administration because Raila has been cheated out of victory in the last three elections that's what Kalonzo said and he was referring to the bipartisan talks that have collapsed yeah and he said for sure Azmi is going back to the streets that's what he said let's say he was making a last ditch appeal to Kenya Kwanza to see reason yeah because he also said that now he'll have to go back to the streets and he's not very young miaka zimeenda yeah time and tide does not wait for any man time does not stand still and remember he was making this address to members of the Waipa party to the Kamba community okay which brings us to a very super fascinating topic you see looking at Waipa politics and the politics of the Kamba nation the truth is the Kamba nation should actually be in Kenya Kwanza and UDA now hold your horses let me explain throughout history the Kamba people the tribe of my biological father have always been on the government side always they have always faithfully belonged to government whatever government is there even if it is an oppressive colonial government they have always been there okay the colonial government welcomed many from the Kamba community into the military they were very happy with them they knew these people were loyal aona shida these are not people going to rebel they respect any government in power they respect power they never ever fit in well into any opposition that's the truth and that is what should be a very clear sign to the root administration that the fact that the kamba nation is not with uda is not with kenya kwanza especially the people on the ground the masses that one should really worry them yeah because they should ask themselves the question why what is this that has made people go against their very dna yeah and choose not to be with you it must be something very serious and it is and don't fool yourself for a second it has nothing to do with kalonzo musyoka's perceived popularity in the community it doesn't because we have seen cases where major politicians from the Kamba nation have moved to UDA but they have moved there alone the people have not followed them <laughs> they have not i'll give you the perfect example the machakos governor yeah was vinyandeti governor of vinyandeti my former mp as soon as she was elected started making very serious advances towards government and Kenya Kwanza I believe you remember that but it seems something went wrong and I'll tell you what went wrong she realized very quickly that even to shift a few of her people in that direction was impossible wakambo alisema apana aye dienda this community that supported moi to the very end yeah even when it was very clear that the dictatorial kanu government was going these people were still family in kanu mama na baba so what happened this time they're not with kenya kwanza they're not in government i believe for the first time in history and don't tell me about 2013 and 2017 because former president huru kenyatta 
Even when Raila Molo Dinga was his enemy, his political enemy, he made many visits to Kambani. He was very warmly received. People were happy to see him. Government was coming to Kambani. They were happy and they didn't care about anything else. So what has gone wrong this time? Ask yourself that question. And then you realize that discussing 2027 is discussing Ndoto Yamchana. Now before I go, I want to point you to another sign that is unfolding in our dear motherland. If you've been walking around and driving around recently, you will have noticed that there are a lot of signs, especially in Nairobi, but also in other major cities and towns in Kenya, but especially in Nairobi, you will have noticed a lot of signs saying shop to let. Unapita hapa, shop to let. Unapita hapa, shop to let. Now, please think about it a little deeply. What does that mean? What does that translate to? It translates to businesses shutting down. That is somebody who's running a business. Things have become difficult. Maybe they even have rent arrears. They've not paid rent for a few months. And they've been forced to close shop. Their source of income, Kwisha Maneno. Now, yesterday, just last night, I was told a very interesting story, the reality of what is unfolding, which I want to share with you, to solidify the point I'm making. This person was telling me that they know a stall owner in Nairobi, a very close friend, who was telling them that the neighboring stall also doing business like her, yeah, came to them and told them, please, nikopeshe mchele kidogo, ata kama nikakwata. So you have seen I've not sold anything today. I don't have anything. Yeah, just give me something. Give me that rice on credit. I go and feed my children. Yeah, then tomorrow when I sell, I will pay you. And remember, they're asking for a quarter kg of rice. And they have three, four children. Do your math. Will that be enough to feed three, four children. Anyway, they get their rice on credit. And the next day, in the evening, the same neighbor comes back. Now, as you have seen, I've been idle the whole day. I have not sold. So, I'm sorry, I cannot pay you. And two, three days later, that shop is closed. Now, I'm keeping this very simple yeah, so that we get a clear picture of what is happening in Kenya. Okay? Remember that person who owns that business? That's not a small person. I'm sure they've employed maybe a maid. Maybe they have somebody to cook for the children. They have a servant or two. Who are also waiting for their salaries. Okay? Jijazie. And remember when you see those signs. Shop to let. It is a very bad sign. Yeah? Because what's going to happen next. Is house to let because the problem starts at the business no source of income so it is going to have an effect on many other things that is how our economy is currently and this information shocked me to my bones because i knew i was aware i talked to people every day that things in kenya were very bad but i didn't realize that they're this bad that opened my eyes now I can hear somebody saying, Chris, why are you telling us this? We already know. Things are very bad. Why are you telling us bad news and you don't have a solution? Actually, I have a solution. I have a strong suggestion. You see what is happening when things are very bad is that the market has changed completely. It has rearranged itself. And you are still stuck at that place where you've always been, not realizing that you can be somewhere else and you make a very good living. Or at least to survive through these hard times. Let me give you an example from the past, a real life example. Because you see there's nothing new under the sun. We have had the Great Depression. Things were very bad in Kenya in the 90s, early 90s. Yeah, no foreign exchange at all. So people couldn't even order products from outside the country. Things were bad. People were suffering. 
So this is not the first time that this is happening. I'm aware that we're reaching many places where we've never reached. For instance, the price of fuel has never reached where it has reached today. The exchange rate of the Kenya shilling to the dollar has never reached anywhere near 140. Never ever. I remember those days people used to talk about 100 and people shiver. And it never reached 100. Now it is 140. Things qua ground is quarter 40. So this person in the past, this is what they did. They had a huge stock in their shop. They couldn't sell because people don't have money to buy. And so what they did, they had this brilliant idea of how to adjust themselves to the situation. Now, if you don't have money to pay for what I'm selling, is there another way you can pay? And this crazy guy decided that he's going to use butter trade. You don't have food to feed your family. But can you give me something in exchange? And I'll give you supply of food for a month, two months, three months. I have everything. I'm almost a mini supermarket. And in this particular market, people were very desperate by that time. So some people decided, I have two vehicles. There's this small shopping basket. I can give that one to you. And the shop owner said, okay, I will give you food and products worth so much. And then I will give you in cash this much money. And the deal was done. And this owner of a mini supermarket at that time took this vehicle and a few others and opened a showroom. Selling those vehicles at throwaway prices. Which still made him a very huge profit on this particular deal. And this particular example I'm talking about, by the time those hard times ended, their life had changed. They were very, very wealthy. Now, in case you don't like that example, no problem. My point is, I wanted to emphasize that things have changed. And you have to change with the times. Yeah, not only to survive, but you can also thrive. Now, in 2019, I produced a set of videos on how to prosper during hard times. And some of you wrote emails to me and asked me if my head was working properly. Chris, what are you smoking? <laughs> because then times were good. And of course, shortly after that, we went into COVID. And times were not so good. And some people called me a prophet. And some people said those sets of videos helped them a lot. Go through that period. Yahoma Yamchina. That crisis. That pandemic. But you see, looking back today, at that time I did not understand why I did those videos. I didn't do those videos for the pandemic. I did them for now. Because things are worse right now. Yeah? And you can get hold of this set of videos together with two ebooks that will just help you adjust very effectively. Yeah? Even if you've never done a business before. Even if you're very experienced. You'll be able to adjust and do things which right now you may think are only a dream. Okay? Now you can see details on your screens right now. I have a special offer for a very limited time. I have reduced that price for people who are not members of my weekly intelligence briefings. For only $19.95, you can get this very detailed documentary and the two ebooks. I've also extended the offer for WAB members, those who are already members of WAB. Yeah. It'll still be $13.95, but please rush. This will not last long. You need this information for what is already here. Yeah, I will no longer say it is coming. It is already here. But I hope, even if you don't take me up on my offer, that you sit down and study the market and realize that things have changed. Please adjust yourself to the changes. Yeah, Think and always remember that the greatest fortunes have not been made when things are booming. Do your own research. You don't have to believe me. They have been made when things are very bad. During times of great crisis, those are the times of the greatest opportunities. All the best. Because I really care. Until next time, this is Chris Komekuja.